Welcome to Sports on Tap, partnered with NEO Sports Insiders Network, presented by RRT Productions. <laughs> Want to thank you and welcome into Studio J in Brunswick, Ohio. Welcome back, everyone. It's going to be our Week 9 matchups coming up, along with our spotlight games. But uh, right now, we're going to talk a little football, and we're going to talk about the Buckeye Bucks, who... We're undefeated going into the game with Firelands. Firelands only coming into this game with one loss, but the Bucks uh, broke on top 7 to nothing on a 28-yard run by Nate Scott in the game to get uh, the Bucks started. And they Nate Polidori goes 84 yards for a Bucks touchdown. It was 14 to nothing in the first quarter and that's the way it would end in the first quarter is 14 nothing. Then Trevor Tomey Took it to the house from 17 yards out. The kick after was good. It was 21 nothing Bucks. This in the second quarter before Firelands would answer as quarterback Brad Thrasher gets Firelands on the board with 25 seconds to go left in the half. It was the Bucks 21, the Firelands Falcons 7. Now the Bucks go down the field on three plays and scored on a Trevor Tomey touchdown right before half. They would go in at half leading 28 to 7 over the Firelands Falcons. And before this, the Firelands Falcons had only allowed 31 points in the last six weeks, and that included four straight shutouts before uh, this game against Buckeye. Um, now let's go as Nathan Palladori again scored in the third quarter and then again in the fourth for his third touchdown in the game as Buckeye wins and stays undefeated 42-7. to The final in this game, Buckeye improves to 8-0, on the year, Firelands falls to six and two, and let's uh, go over some of the stats. Rushing Nathan Palladori, 121 yards and three touchdowns, and him and uh, or both Nathan Scott and Trevor Tomey actually had 111 yards rushing, but Tomey had two touchdowns, and it was Scott with one, and uh, an impressive win for the Buckeye Bucks. Who you know, Firelands is having a great season. I mean. You come back with four straight shutouts, and then you face a Buckeye team who's been rolling all year. Um, Buckeye's closest game, I believe, was Rocky River, but this was a 42-7 to win. And really, you know, I think they started it off right with, you know, 7 nothing with Nate Scott, then 14 nothing right away. And when you're in that hole, you know, I, I think some teams really – get a little down and their confidence might be shot a little bit. Finals did end up scoring, but it was 21, nothing at that point. So how about Buckeye? I mean, eight, no, you know, they were Fox eights game of the week. Congratulations to them and, and coach Pinzoni. And uh, we're hoping um, to get them up to Z's cream and bean, whether it's some players and coaches up there to talk to us, but what a great year so far for them. Yeah, this is exactly how, how they drew it up, especially with these guys. Now, um, you know, they all started as juniors. Some of them even played the sophomores. You know, so you, you're really starting to see that experience come to fruition uh, from from a from a leadership standpoint. And, uh, you know, th they've been running the same offense for three years. And right now they're just throwing it out. They're just throwing it out there and hoping and seeing if anyone can stop it. And no one has been able to. The, the Buckeye defense has been tremendous all year. I mean, they held all Ohio quarterback uh, Brad Thrasher to only 98 yards rushing and 56 through the air in this game. Uh, that's a big credit to, uh, you know, their defense led by uh, Brad Calta. Uh, Justin Lowry and Dustin McCullough amongst you know that's just three out of the uh, out of uh, a number of outstanding uh, players defensively for the Bucks and you know it, Buckeyes going to travel to Lagrange Keystone they're three and five uh, Firelands Firelands will host uh, Black River and uh, you know Buckeyes looking pretty good right now as uh, as far as finishing this um, the regular season strong and they're going to need to get all the points they can get so they can stay in that top uh, part of the bracket where you know that's where Akron, St. Vincent, St. Mary's, Hoban. Archbishop Hoban, and Poland Seminary. Both, all, all three of them are currently ahead of Buckeye, both in the state polls and in the regional poll, in, in the region's uh, computer points. So, you know, it, it's going to behoove Buckeye to stay in that uh, upper echelon there to at least avoid a matchup with those guys in in week one. You know, get their get host a playoff game, get that playoff victory they've been they've been wanting to get for so long. And then see what happens against the, one of the best teams in Division Three afterwards. And I want to give a shout out to Dave Ray. He's the uh, statistician, and Buckeye is. Uh, you know, he sent us some great information, and they have a great website there to get stats and uh, you know a really nice website on who they play. So you know, Buckeye is a smaller school, but if you want to go and, and learn more about their team and what they're doing up there, you know, they c you can go to their website. 
um, and I believe it's BuckeyeBucksFootball.com. Um, let me double check that, and I'll <laughs> give it before the the uh, day is out. But give yeah. credit to uh, you know to Dave Ray. He does a great job, and actually knew Ed as he coached Ed Dick. At some point in his football career, well, we, we, he coached against me. I can tell you that. Oh, he, yeah, okay. Against me, I played for the Colts. Uh, he coached the uh, the Jaguars, who were a team made up of entirely of kids from the Buckeye area. Um, you know, so I had many a battle against the Jaguars uh, back in the day. And I would imagine when we when we had our when we had our All Star games and we would play against another league, uh, I believe then uh, at that point then, uh, you know, we were on the same squad. So. Uh, <laughs> Props to him for remember. I mean, I, I definitely remember who. I definitely remember uh, Coach Ray, and uh, you know, is as a kid you remember the coaches a lot. Yeah. You know, to me, it's, it's kind of it's cool when you're a kid and your your coach kind of remembers you from that far out. And and guys, going back, not to go over from your glory days or anything like that. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, just one big stat from Buckeye that you know we keep adding on to every game is the fact how many points they're scoring and how many points they're actually giving up. So, so far, oh. season totals, uh, they are actually they, – they have scored 355 points, and they've only given up 69 all year. Yeah. Wow. So, that is a huge point differential, and um, they are scoring the ball, and they are not giving up many points, and that is a good recipe um, as you continue the end of the season. Yeah, one, that's – as I was as you brought up, that's one of the biggest, you know, surprises to me is – that they're winning, not that they're winning, but the way they're winning. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just it, total dominating it, effort. It's right. Yeah, it's they're not even. It, it it doesn't seem like they're at any point. I mean, outside of when they played Revere, it was kind of a close. It's probably their closest game all year. I mean, thirty five fourteen. You know, they ended up winning that, but even in that game, they were never in in doubt. I think they, you know, the defense may have gotten a little bit, you know, out of whack, or or you know, Revere made some plays. But since their second week, they've given up what. Uh, maybe at most a touchdown <laughs> per game. Yeah. Two shutouts. I mean, they're they're just clobbering people. So that's I mean that's the one thing. You know, you mentioned they got to keep pace with the St. Vincent St. Marys, but I'm looking at you know what they've done so far, and I'm th- I'm thinking if I'm the coach, I'm like, how do I stop the offense, and how do I score points against this defense? Because that's the the eye opening thing to me is when you look at the performance and you look at. I mean, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You got to go out there and execute, and they are clearly going out there and executing. The game plan that's drawn up, and that's the that's the scary thing for other teams going into the final couple weeks of the regular season and the playoffs is these guys are at a point now where they're executing so well that you really have to go in there and that old adage you got to punch them in the mouth early and get them off their spot because if you let these guys get into a rhythm offensively defensively it's a very very long night for the for the opposing team and that's the one impressive thing that I've seen throughout all these games with Buckeye. And it is uh, www.buckeyebucksfootball.com if you uh, want some the school's history, the records, and uh, stats from this year. But now let's go over to uh, Ed Dick as he's going to talk a little bit about the Maslin Tigers. Is They had a pretty close game. Yeah, it was a pretty solid game. Uh, Maslin Washington was able to hold off Cincinnati Mountain Healthy 28-26, to even to, evens its record at 4-4. Four and four. The Tigers were paced offensively by quarterback Seth Blankenship as he completed 13 of 23 passing for 234 yards and two touchdowns. He had plenty of help with wide receiver Lee Hurst the third catching nine passes for 185 yards and a touchdown. Running back Keyshawn Watson rushed for 126 yards on 16 carries with another touchdown. Uh, Maslin uh, they kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit. They overcame three turnovers. Uh, and there was on, an almost 10-minute disparity in the time of possession, uh, and, and able to overcome the uh, you know their own their own their own doing to beat the Fighting Owls. Uh, actually, uh, Mountain Healthy had a chance to tie the game. They had scored a touchdown uh, with just less with less than two minutes left in the game. However, the two-point conversion was intercepted by Maslin, and uh, they were able to run the clock out. Uh, and with the win. Uh, you know, Maslin does improve to four and four. They currently sit one spot out of the D two Region Five playoffs uh, at number nine, and they have a real big opportunity to pick up some more points as they're going to host the seven and one uh, St. Vincent St. Mary Fighting Irish from Akron in Week Nine. Um, you know, we, we're starting to see. I, I talked to Coach Hunick a little bit over the weekend, and uh, you know, they're starting to they're, they're really starting to get things together. Um, you know, they're they're winning some of these games that they they might have lost earlier in the year. They're starting to you know, especially the Austin Tom Fitch game, for example. 
Uh, but you know, th this is a close game. The, uh, Mount Healthy gave them all they can handle, and Maslin was able to come out on top. Yeah, and you know, looking at uh, some of the impressive statistics for the team, quarterback Seth Blankenship had 234 yards and two touchdowns on the on the game. Um, running back Keyshawn Watson had 128 yards and a touchdown. And then we had the chance to see Lee Hurst. Are you just repeating the same stats I just said? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I, I missed I them. literally said all of those stats. Oh, sorry. <laughs> then I won't go any farther. I, <laughs> how many, wait, I, wait, I missed wait. that. <laughs> how many, how many, you missed the recap? How many yards did Lee Hurst have? Maybe 185. <laughs> Is there an echo in the building? On nine, care, on nine receptions. That's right. And a touchdown. Yeah, I, I completely <laughs> missed that. I thought you just gave the recap of the game. Well, that wasn't – well, yeah, I did give a – I gave I just – okay, I missed that. <laughs> I was paying attention to something else. <laughs> Dynamite <laughs> drop in Troutman. That's, that's right. <laughs> Best color man in the bigs. That's Long right, wheel. baby. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Hey, extra props to, uh, to Seth Blankenship, Lee Hurston, and uh, Keyshawn yeah. Watson from Rob Troutman. He that's really right, wanted, man. Yeah. I was really yeah, impressed. He was ready to go at it. Hey, yeah. I saw him live. It was impressive. I, I know. And that. they've continued. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to say one thing with Maslin. You know they're four and four, and like you said, they're 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 spot out of the unofficial D two region five rank. Unofficial, yeah. By unofficial, I mean they're, they're official. Yeah. I, I trust Joe Itell more. Yeah, the state. yeah. And you know what? And I think the big thing for them is they gotta they gotta win both of these next games really to to get into the playoffs. I mean it's, you know they they're 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 at the ninth position. Um, you know beating a St. Vincent St. Mary would just get them a ton of computer points going in. And even Can Canton, um, I'm sorry, Hoover is there. They're playing Canton McKinley. Canton McKinley, uh, that's a that's a pretty good you know win too. They need to they need to kind of, as they say in Buffalo, circle the wagons and say, look guys, we need to win these next two. So that's that's got to. I mean, obviously, I'm not telling the coaching staff or the fan base anything they don't already know, but you know, it's it's going to be important. And you know, they don't have a, they don't have a margin for error. They don't at all. They they don't control their own destiny. They need to win to get in. And, you know, that's where a lot of these teams are. We're seeing that now. You know, only a certain number of teams control their own destiny at this point, according to Joe Itell. And the ones that are on that bubble cannot afford to let any opportunity slip away. And I think that's the fun part about the back end of the season. You know, the, first, you know, the beginning part of the season, everyone's pumped up because everyone has an opportunity. Middle part of the season, some teams start to take down. It's now the back end of the season. Those dominant teams are, A, prepping for playoffs, but those bubble teams are coming in saying, we need to get in. We need to get to the playoffs. And I think you're, it makes for a lot of exciting football coming up in the next couple of weeks, especially week nine, week ten, you know, as we go down the home stretch. Well, I don't want to copy what Ed says, so I'll hurry up and talk. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think, you know, when you look at Maslin uh, offensively, you know, they can pass the ball and they can run. So it makes them, you know, a little bit dangerous on offense. The one thing they have to be careful of – is not turning the ball over. I mean, Mount Healthy scored 13 points off of three turnovers and uh, ended up cutting the lead to one. It was 21-20, I believe, at one point. Um, but, you know, if, if they can limit their turnovers, I mean, this offense, Seth Blankenship has really done a nice job leading the team, being able to make some key passes. Um, but they balance it out with a really strong running game. And that offensive line really does create holes for these guys. Um, and, and Lee Hurst, one thing that impressed me about him was the fact that he was a quarterback, kind of did what Braxton Miller did. He, he went over to wide receiver and does some other things, I believe, on special teams. But, um, you know, look look what a transition. I mean, 185 yards catching, I mean, to, to change from quarterback. I mean, I, I'm sure they had a lot of time to practice and stuff. But um, – very impressive is, you know, they're putting up some points now. I mean, 7-6 to six loss, like you said, Austin Town Fitch. It's amazing they only put up six points in that game because lately they've been really putting up 20-plus points in each game. So great job by Maslin to continue to win and figure out, you know, offensively and defensively where they need to be. Absolutely. Uh, uh, my apologies. That's Lee Hurst, the second. Uh, I'm sure if there's a Lee Hurst third, he'll probably be a beast too. Uh, later in life, but <laughs> um, well, yeah, it, it, excellent win for Maslin, and uh, you know, good, good luck to them going against St. Vincent and St. Mary. Um, actually, hopefully they'll uh, maybe they'll hang a loss on them and help Buckeye out a little bit in the uh, Region Five or in Region Seven there. Yeah. All right, so we got uh, week nine. Week nine uh, with our respective uh, conferences. Uh, Josh, uh, Greater Cleveland Conference. What's uh, what's on tap for week nine? <laughs> <laughs> Dynamite drop in, Eddie. Bing. Um, 
to start off the GCC, we have uh, Brunswick traveling to Mentor. This is going to be a big game for uh, both teams. Mentor coming off a win. Brunswick coming off a, a not so a good uh, loss, but they're looking to get back on track. Uh, Euclid travels to uh, Medina. Uh, again, Euclid is a red hot right now. Uh, and they look to continue their winning ways against the Bees. And Medina Saturday, Solon travels to uh, Shaker Heights. Uh, Shaker Heights looking to get off the schneid. Yet to have a victory in the GCC, but looking to get that. It's not going to be easy, though, uh, against a red-hot, also a red-hot Solon team. Uh, my spotlight game, though, this is my something's got to give game. Uh, Illyria uh, travels to Strongsville. Both teams coming off losses. Actually, both teams have two-game losing streaks. Uh, the winner of this game uh, could help their way into the playoffs. The loser pretty much might be out of the playoffs, depending on how everything shakes out. But I'm really looking forward to the running back matchup in this game. We have Strongsville running back Zach Con uh, going up against Deliria's uh, Chris Atkinson. This is going to be a very, very uh, run, old school, grinded out, knockout game. Uh, so that's why I'm looking at this one as a spotlight game in the GCC for Week Nine. Whoa! I got got a little into Whoa. it. Got a little into it there. You did. You got yeah. excited. I got a little deep voice going on. I was at the Browns game yesterday. I was screaming my lungs off. So now I got deep voice guy going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Sorry. Sorry. All right. What just... a great transition into the Southwestern Conference. Well, we're excited over here, Josh. Do you have it? Back to the chocolate milk. All right, let's go to uh, Lakewood as they take uh, its Rangers against the Rangers. Oh, the boy. Lakewood Rangers against I'll the take North the Rangers. Ridgeville. Rangers. Rangers are probably going to win that game. Yeah. As 100% certainty the Rangers yep. win that game. Lead pipe lock right there. Lakewood looks to get uh, their first win of the season as they travel to North Ridgeville. Midview travels to Avon Lake. Can Avon Lake pull the upset against the undefeated Midview Middies? North Olmstead travels to Olmstead Falls. This is going to be a really good game. Um, North Olmstead comes off a loss at home against Berea Mid Park. Olmstead Falls comes off a win. And Westlake at Amherst. And somebody's got to win here, folks. Somebody's got to win. Oh, no, Westlake already won. But Amherst is going to try to win <laughs> as it's Westlake 1-7 trying to beat Amherst at 0-8. Ken Amherst uh, pull out a win here. And then my spotlight game is at Berea Mid Park. It's the Avon Eagles traveling to Berea Ooh, Mid Park. That's going to be a good that one. It's going to be a good that game, is. yeah. And uh, yeah, the 7-1 Eagles travel to the 6-2 Berea Mid Park. Lots uh, of points Titans. on line there, folks. Yeah, and if, if Avon wins that one, uh, you know, Midview is, is continuing to be dominant, but they can stay right behind there. Um, I, I think North Olmstead and Olmstead Fall should be a good game as well. Um, but – you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be one of those games that uh, Avon needs to win. You know, in the conference, you have three teams at six and two. North Olmstead at four and four. Avon Lake at three and five, and then one and seven and zero and eight for Amherst and Lakewood. But seven and one is Avon, and eight and zero oh is Midview. So uh, we'll talk about the uh, rankings and all that coming up. But some good games in the Southwestern Conference. Now let's go over to the Suburban League. The American Division and Sean Duff, who has a big smile on his face still, even Man, from I earlier. I always got a smile on my face. That's right. I get to hang out and talk high school football with you guys today. That's right. Uh, first game up is Warrensville Heights traveling to Aurora. Aurora coming off a big, big win over Copley. Uh, that's actually going to be – I'm interested to see if Aurora can continue um, going on or is that possibly a trap game. Uh, the next game will be Kent Roosevelt at 3-5, and five, heading to Copley at 7-1. and one. Copley, again, trying to bounce back from that pretty – Heartbreaking loss to uh, Aurora, you know, spoiling their undefeated season. Next game we have is Talmadge at one and seven, going to three and five. Revere, uh, Talmadge again looking to kind of maybe build off a pretty solid performance, um, you know, last week, and 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 in they were in the game with with Barberton, um, but unfortunately they just didn't play what play well enough. Barberton kind of got there. And my spotlight game of the week nine is Barberton six and two, two and two in the conference, going to Highland. Five and three and four and one in the conference, folks. This is probably the best game we're going to have in this division, um, and I'm very, very interested to see if Highland can continue that that winning streak and and go forward um, and kind of continue being that team that went into uh, an upset Aurora and, and and was able to you know consistently play at a high level. 
Um, and I think, you know, they just got caught there. But I think, you know, this is going to be a pretty good game. Barberton, again, had, you know, they had a couple losses. But so last couple weeks they've been on pretty good of a roll. So this should be a very fun and entertaining game for anybody who's in the Medina Highland area to go check out on Friday night. Ed, what do you got on tap? <laughs> for the <laughs> bing, bing, for bing. the uh, national division on Friday. All right, uh, winless Cuyahoga Falls 0 and 8. They're going to travel to North Worlton uh, 2 and 6. We also have Hudson. They're going to host uh, Hudson right now is uh, 6 and 2. They're going to host Wadsworth uh, 3 and 5. Uh, that's going to be a decept- that's going to be a deceptively tough game. You look at Wadsworth Wadsworth's record at 3 and 5, you, and you think this might be a blowout, but. Uh, Wadsworth has given um, Brexville and Stowe all they can handle this year, so it's not going to be a walk in the park for the Explorers. Uh, Nordonia, they are 5-3. and three. They're going to Twinsburg 0-8. Oh uh, Anthony Perrine um, might have a lot of the yards next game, next week against, uh, against the Tigers. Uh, the spotlight game of the week, though, this is something that I've been calling for quite a while. Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, Brexville kind of slipped up a little bit in week six, but this is a 7-1 Brexville team. With their backup quarterback, Dan Sherilla, uh going to take in uh, this contest against Stowe Monroe Falls, led by Jason Gobble. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic matchup. This has kind of been the matchup that I've been waiting for all year, uh, at least from a Suburban League National Division standpoint. Lots of points on the board here. Stowe, um, unfortunately, due to their winning, they're beating a winless team last week, kind of dropped in Division One, Region One. Broadview Heights needs this win in a, in, a, in a pretty bad way. Unfortunately, they're not getting a whole lot of second-level point help from their defeated opponents right now, so they're, they're on the outside looking in. Uh, but a win against Stowe would certainly help their cause. So the spotlight game of the week, Brexville broadview Heights taking on Stowe-Monroe Falls. Yeah, that should be a fun one to watch, especially with Brexville. You know, they've been finding ways to win. This is going to be a little bit tougher uh, as, against the Stowe team. Has Stowe had any real close games? Now Stowe, it seems like they dominated a lot of their teams this year. Stowe's having the way with their teams, and then Wadsworth was their closest game. I think Wadsworth, you know, the Wadsworth had a chance to beat them. Uh, they had to come from behind and score in the last minute to beat Wadsworth. Uh, Stowe did. Wow. Uh, so I mean, Stowe, uh, you know, besides that game, it's been, you know, they had a really tough game against Hudson as well. Hudson gave them all they can handle. They really shut down <clears throat> Jason Gobble, but they were still able to find ways to win that game. Yeah, you know. So <clears throat> if it ends up being a close contest, it wouldn't surprise me if Stowe was able to pull this one out because um, they do have experience coming from behind in the last minute to win a game. And if it gets to a point where they can't really run, do what they want to do offensively, they can still grind out a win. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one to watch, though. Uh, Brexville especially. But uh, right now, let's talk a little bit about the team rankings. We'll start in the Greater Cleveland Conference. According to Joe Itell. That's right. We'll just go around and, uh, you know, give some of the teams that uh, right now are doing pretty well in the team rankings. Well, the uh, uh, GCC, uh, as all of you should know, it's Division One, Region One. <clears throat> excuse me, top 16 teams make the playoffs. And I got half the teams right now in the GCC that are in the playoffs. The other half are out. Uh, nice. We'll start with the uh, top-ranked GCC team, according to Joe Itell. It would be the Menor Cardinals. They are uh, ranked fifth. Euclid follows close to behind, ranked seventh. Solon uh, behind them at ninth. Uh, and then, according to Joe Itell, the last team of the GCC to make it uh, into the playoffs would be the Strongsville Mustangs at 15th. On the outside, looking in, uh, Elyria, 18th. Br- uh, Medina, 20th. Brunswick, 21st. And Shaker Heights, 25th. So um, <clears throat> kind of surprising, to be honest with you, that, you know, uh, Brunswick is still uh, somewhat behind uh, Medina and Illyria um, a little bit, um, even though their first few games of the season ended up, actually their first four games of the season ended up being losses. But still, Brunswick had some has had some quality wins uh, the past three out of four games. But um, other than that, not much else is surprising um, looking at, you know, I talked about in my spotlight game, the winner could be in the playoffs, the loser could be out. And if Strongsville loses that game, they could be on the outside looking in and uh, with a win from Illyria over Strongsville can, pl- uh, can catapult them into the top 16th. So this is a very big game for both games, uh, both teams, and that's why I made it my spotlight game. Well, I think uh, if Brunswick wants to, you know, make it into the playoffs, obviously they need to win the last two games against Strongsville and Menor, um, you know, 
being 21st, I mean, they, they can get in at a 5-5 five and five record because you're going to get a ton of points mm. if you can somehow pull out both of those wins, which, you know, Strongsville, you know, that wouldn't be a bad win either. I just don't know if just beating Strongsville – would be enough to get them well, into that you, 16th I, spot, but you never know what the other teams ahead of them are I tell you what, though, the, the way that Menor has been so up and down this year, the, the teams and the games that you expect them to win big, they haven't. Uh, so you just never know, and, and uh, that that's going to be an important game, uh, you know, when it comes to um, Brunswick and Menor coming up this Friday. Um, we don't know exactly what Menor team we're getting. I'm sure Luke Beal and his guys are, you know, um, preparing for the team that beat St. Ignatius. Um, but you just never know. So this is, uh, again, very important game. And if Brunswick can, can somehow win this game and then possibly not looking ahead too much further but beat Strong, so they're going to be right in the playoff uh, picture. So um, each, like I said, each game is very important. And you know what we didn't talk about is the Brunswick Strongsville game now the last game of the season again. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I think they were listening to our show the last few years. It only took yeah, it, it took them uh, a little bit longer than I had uh, anticipated, <laughs> but nonetheless, the uh, better late than never in yeah. uh, getting that getting that contest where it needs to be at the end of the year. It's a rivalry game. It's one of the best, absolutely one of the best uh, public school rivalries in the in the area, and it needs to remain that. I would completely agree with you. Um, now we'll go to the Southwestern Conference, and we'll first start in the in the same Division One, Region One, where Berea Mid Park right now is six and two, and they're thirteenth in uh, that region. And uh, the top sixteen teams, like we said, uh, make it. So right now they would be in, but most of the teams are in Division Two, Region Four, and we'll start with Midview. Is there eight? No, they're number one in the region. Avon dropped to fourth. North Ridgeville, who was uh, up a little bit, they're they're at sixth. Olmstead falls eighth, and those are the top eight uh, Southwestern Conference teams that would make it. Looking on the outside, North Olmstead is fifteenth, and they they'd have to win out if they even have any kind of shot. Avon Lake eighteenth, and from there, uh, you know Westlake and Amherst still at the bottom of that region. So uh, you know, looking at some of the teams, obviously. Um, we'll start narrowing down some of the teams on where they're going to be. But uh, Avon might have dropped a spot. But, you know, uh, pretty much Midview and Avon are for sure in. Olmstead Falls um, also probably to get in. And some uh, and some other teams, North Ridgeville. Um, but how about Berea Mid Park in Division One, Region 1? They're still in it. But, uh, you know, if they lose any one of their last few games, it's going to be a tough go for them to stay in the top 16 there. Yeah, I mean, it, like it's such a closely contested uh, division, uh, Division One, Region One. I mean, especially a team like Berea Mid Park. Unfortunately, some of their wins are over teams that don't have a lot of second level points. They they have wins over zero and eight Lakewood, zero and eight Steel, um, and one and seven Westlake. Or do they? No, I don't know if they played Westlake yet. They end with Westlake. It looks okay. like. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, that's not going to help them out too much exactly. either. So, I mean, it's going to behoove the Titans to uh, take care of business at home against Avon to really give them that extra push that, that they'll need uh, to be able to get into the playoffs there. Yeah, that's why the, the next week is so huge for them. Um, Avon, I, I think, is probably going to be in, but they can get some more points um, against Berea Mid Park. So, it's going to be interesting. We'll keep updating the uh, team ranking for the Southwestern Conference. But now. So over to Sean Duffy in the American uh, Division for the Suburban League. Yeah, you know, looking at the the regions here, I mean, obviously Aurora is right now controlling their own destiny in Division Two, Region Three. Um, Copley's there at four, uh, pretty much again, maybe not controlling their own destiny, but if they win out, they're pretty much going to guarantee themselves a playoff spot. Right now, I think they're really shooting for, you know, getting a home game um, in that particular region the only other team that we that i would cover um is barberton sitting there at 13th when only the top eight make it mm. is, you know a lot's gonna have to fall their way in the next two weeks for them to get into that eight spot you know and and that's gonna be tough um when you look at the other teams the, the other team in in my division um is in region four division two and that's highland um right now highland's sitting at seven so they they're in this position now where they have to really take care of business and unfortunately if they take care of business that means Barberton doesn't take care of business this week and you know that's kind of the situation they find themselves in you know Highland's in a pretty tough division with Midview at the top of region four you know you don't want to be at eight 
going no, in week not one. At all. So uh-uh. you're, you 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 want to get a favorable matchup, maybe against like a Glenville, maybe even an Avon. They may match up pretty well against. Um, you want to go Perry. out. To, you don't want to go out to Perrysburg either. Uh, you don't want to go out to no, Perry. That's a long drive. They're long pretty travel. tough out. They're they pretty are. tough out there yeah. too. So I mean, look, Highland needs to get, you know needs to take care of business to stay in the playoff hunt. Um, realistically, those are my three teams, three or four teams that are in there. Um, just you know, right now I would say Aurora, Copley, and Highland are, are my locks as, as as of week eight. You know, going next two weeks, Barberton's got a shot, but again, everything ha- really has to fall their way. They're in a tough, tough region, and you know, the, unfortunately, they were they're they're beating a lot of teams, but unfortunately, the teams that they beat aren't helping them points wise, and the teams that they got beat, well, they're ahead of them in the in the in the regions, and it doesn't help them too much either. So, you know, that's kind of where the American teams stand. Uh, Ed, what what is what's it looking like for the national team? Uh, for the national division, we got two teams that are currently qualified for the playoffs if the season were to end today. Stowe Monroe Falls, they are ranked number eight in Division One, Region One. Uh, they would host a playoff game in that region as the top 16 make it. Um, you know they they have a pretty tough contest here against Brexville Broadview Heights. Uh, Broadview Heights they're actually second in the in the division. However, in Region Three they are ranked number 11. Um, you know in that region this so they 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 need this win probably more than anything else. If they don't win this game, then Brexville Broadview Heights can probably say goodbye to a playoff spot. They'll wow. end up they'll end up being eight and two and probably missing the playoffs. Uh, the problem for Bra- Brooksville Broadview Heights, they're just not getting that many second level points. Kind of the same way Barberton is, you know what I mean? Like not a, yep. not a terrible record, but just the w- the the wins that you have aren't aren't paying off right now. It, it, they're not conference game. They're not conference wins over Padua and Garfield Heights, both of which have one win. Brunswick, unfortunately, you know, usually in Brunswick feels the same way about Brooksville Broadview Heights. It, you whoever wins that game, you usually count on six to seven wins from the other team and. Unfortunately, Brunswick has not been able to deliver that for the Bees. Uh, Hudson in Region 3, they're actually ranked number 6. Uh, so while they're one game behind, uh, they're, they're tied with Brexville Broadview Heights in the standings. Uh, they are ahead of Brexville Broadview Heights in the region. Uh, the difference in that is, uh, a, six to, is, a, is a win over 6-2 and two Austin Town Fitch. Uh, that's really helping the uh, Explorers' cause there. Um also, on the outside looking in, Nordonia, they are ranked ninth in Division Two, Region 3. Uh, Nordonia also had a pretty tough go uh, from a schedule standpoint. Uh, their losses are – they lost a, a tough game to Mayfield. Uh, they were able to beat Bedford and Dover. Both teams are 4-4, four and four, and then you got in the conference play from there. Uh, unfortunately, two of their losses are to Hudson and Stowe, uh, and that's what's keeping them out of playoffs right now. But uh, with a win over – Wadsworth in week 10 they might be able to get them over the top they're not going to get anything this week because they're going to they're gonna play Twinsburg so uh, they really got to hope that Bedford and Dover uh, does their part uh, to help them out uh, as far as the rest of the the, the division uh, Wadsworth right now is ranked 16th in division 2 region 4 they need um, a godly amount of help to get in I, I would say that they're out North Royalton is division 1 region 1 they are ranked 32nd they are out Twinsburg and Cuyahoga Falls are both winless. Um, Cuyahoga Falls is tied for 33rd in Region 1. They are most certainly out, as well as the Twinsburg Tigers. They are uh, tied for 26th in Division 2, Region 3. Uh, so my two, I think my two locks, I can lock in Stowe and Hudson. Uh, Broadview Heights needs to win this week or else they're out. Nordonia needs a little bit of help. Um, I'm, I, I, it's 50-50 whether they get it or not. So that's where we're at. Uh, national division wise um in this region uh for week eight yeah we're starting to wind down and a lot of these games mean quite a bit to these teams that uh, are either in the playoffs or you know trying to get in and you know it's going to be close for some of these guys i mean you might have a good record and not make it Mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to be fun to watch these last few weeks uh, to see what happens so any other thoughts going in uh, to the week here? I just look forward to it, man. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's good stuff. Now it's getting down to the nitty gritty, so it's fun to see every little victory and every loss is huge and every win is huge and and how it it points out. And again, thanks to Joe Itell, his website is is very good. Um, you know, it's 
for those of us who follow high school football, it's somewhat kind of the Bible this time of year. Uh, kind of gives yeah. us a good breakdown of, of where everything's at. It does a great job. So uh, if you have not been on there, it's JoeItel.com. Uh, really good stuff. Yeah, and for all of you out there that uh, want to check us out, we're on Facebook mm -hmm. um, at 4 slash SOT podcast. You put Facebook.com and 4 slash SOT Just podcast. Just go to Facebook.com and search Sports on Tap. You'll find us. We're the first one and the best one. <laughs> yep. and, uh, and on Twitter, we're at SOT podcast. We're on YouTube as well. And iTunes. iTunes, Podomatic. Um, we're also on NEOSportsInsiders.com. Want to thank them yeah, uh, absolutely. For, for having our podcast, and uh, we're working with them now, and it's a lot of fun. And i got to tell you, their website, you know, we talked about how Joe Itell's website is pretty comprehensive. Their website is very comprehensive. Anything you want to know about Northeast Ohio sports, whether it's, you know, pro sports, Browns, Cavs, Indians, or even college sport, Cleveland State. Cleveland local, State. Local Lake Erie school, Monsters yeah, Lake also. Monsters, they are in depth all over the place. So if you want, if you have questions, or you want to follow a team that's in Northeast Ohio, go ahead and go on to neosportsinsiders.com. They do a great job. And also they have a fantasy football podcast with uh, Brunswick's own Ryan, Ryan Fowler. Fro. fro. The fro yep. and I And I need all the help I can get. I mean, I yes, think we all could. No. no Not just, you, Rob. Just Sean. You're smoking me this week. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Lodi's also a part of that. He does a great job. You've probably heard of him on Channel 5. He's fantastic. Uh, 923 The Fan, WEOL. He's all over the place. So uh, very excited, for, very excited to be with uh, the NEO Sports Insiders. Guys, any last thoughts going into week nine or uh, anything at all? Uh, go Blue. You have this one uh, from a Brunswick standpoint. I didn't know you were a Michigan fan. Oh. 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 Even, oh. even if he was, he wouldn't admit it after last week's That's game. Hell right. no. That's Hell no. Go Irish. Oh, he had to sneak that one in. They're, they're off this How's Vandalia? How's, yeah, how's Vandalia? Oh, yeah, Vandalia. Uh, six and two. Well, they oh, they got a win. Sitting at five in the region. There we uh, go. Yeah, looking pretty good. So Sean Duffy would be providing live first round coverage over there for playoff game. Uh, yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> if I could get if they'll pay for it, I'll go down there and watch that. All right. There's the Aviators of Vandalia. Good luck to them. And uh want to thank everyone for listening. Josh Jeffy. Oh, yes, of course. Hey, you got it. Just say it. Uh, we want to thank Garrick DeSalvo for also coming on our yes, show. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yes. Talking. Uh, train wreck. I'm, I'm just not good reading lists. The, the, the executive producers tonight have just I know. been Spot fantastic. On. That's right. But want to thank him for taking time to join us tonight. Good luck to the Rittman uh, Indians. Good luck to them as good they continue the a great season. Though. Buckeye, Maslin, good luck. And uh, good luck to all the teams in week nine. And if you are at the games, make sure you're using the hashtag SOTHSF. Let us know. Shout out your team. Give us scores. We will retweet. We will favorite. We are not ashamed to do any of that. That's right. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We appreciate it. We're Sports on Tap, partnered with the NEO Sports Insiders Network, presented by RRT Productions. Thanks to Z's Cream and Bean for sponsoring the MVP conferences. For Josh Jeffy, Ed Dick, Sean Duffy, I'm Rob Troutman. Good luck, everyone. Have a great week. For the best coverage of Cavs, Indians, and Browns, check out NEOSportsInsiders.com. NEOSportsInsiders.com brings you breaking news, opinions, and video from all things related to your favorite Cleveland sports teams. Like us on Facebook and follow at NEOSportsInsiders on Twitter for live updates from all the games. NEOSportsInsiders.com, bringing you the best in Northeast Ohio sports coverage. Join Sports on Tap the first Thursday of every month at Z's Cream and Bean, 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio, as Sports on Tap talks local Ohio high school sports, Cleveland sports, and national sports topics. It's all happening at Z's Cream and Bean the first Thursday of every month starting at 7.30 p.m. Join us.
You're listening to Sports on Tap's Ohio High School football coverage live on Mixler. Live streaming every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. Remember to check us out on Twitter at SOT Podcast and use the hashtag SOTHSF to post score stats and pictures from all your high school football games. Like us on Facebook and listen to all of our archive shows on iTunes, YouTube, and Podomatic. Again, our coverage starts every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. We're Sports on Tap.